basically tries to lure Jesus into, he says in verse 8, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. We know Jesus' response is powerful. Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Worship. We're going to talk a little bit about worship this morning. We've been talking about the church and trying to uh, ask the question over and over again, can we identify the church of the New Testament, the church that Jesus built in 2016? Those many, many years later, can we still find, can we still see the church that Jesus built? Can we reproduce that? Can we restore that possibly and have authentic New Testament Christianity here and now? And I believe the resounding answer is yes. If not, if we're not able to do that, then if we don't believe that we're able to do that, then why in the world are we here? Why study? Why pray? Why believe the things that we believe if we don't really, uh, truly think it's possible for us to reproduce that? I believe we, we can, and that's what motivates us to be here this morning. Now, we've seen in our study so far that Jesus can identify his bride. And he should be able to. He knows her better than anybody. He knows what she looks like. He can pick her out of a crowd of, of, of confusing religious options in this world today. So we need to know what she looks like to do the same thing. We need to know. Uh, so we've, we've looked at her divine description over the last couple of weeks as a group uh, the, the terms that Jesus uses, that the Bible uses to describe uh, the church as a group, and then individually last week what she looks like. So the parts of the body, essentially, what, what those things look like. And now what I want us to do is talk a little bit more about the actions of the church that Jesus built. Uh, what does she do that is unique? What does she do that's particular? And so the church gathers on a weekly basis uh, to give honor and worship to its creator, no matter what group. That's, that's what the, the churches do. Uh, how does Jesus' church worship? How does, does Jesus' church look when it's doing these things? What activities, what attitudes are involved? Can those activities and attitudes also be duplicated here and now in the 21st century? What is worship? And what is that all about? So we're going to talk about that this morning. So we've read this passage. What did uh, the devil want Jesus to do in this situation? It's very specifically, he asks that, that Jesus fall down and worship him. To fall down and worship him. Now the word behind this, you may already know, that word worship in this particular context is a word that really means to, to fall down and kiss to, towards the person that you're giving homage to, that you're paying uh, worship to. So it, it's very literal, I guess, in that situation. When, when, when I typed in the word worship into Google, I love to do Google searches because it, it kind of gives us a clue, I think, into what our, our world and our society thinks is important these days. And, and so I did that the, uh, today, and, and uh, I saw uh, when I typed in worship, all these different pictures, those image searches, of people in this basic position, something like this position that you see this man on the screen there. And I, I find this a little, a little ironic. Now, I, I don't want us to get into a big debate about what bodily position we're supposed to take in worship. We know that Scripture shows a number of different body positions that one can be in to, to worship God, and they would be equally valid. And maybe this would be something like that. However, I do think it's interesting the, the sort of progression over time that we have seen. And I, uh, I found a guy that had uh, done a, a, a pictorial of this uh, where you have very much that, that Old Testament feel, that Jewish feel at the beginning where you've got someone with their face to the ground in worship. Uh, where, where, like, for instance, the, uh, uh, the, the parable of the unforgiving servant, whenever he uh, comes in to plead his case, his massive debt falling to the ground in front of this kingly figure to, to pay worship and to plead for basically his life. You've got that kind of image to start things off. And, th and there's no doubt as to who is, is on top when we bow down with our faces to the ground. We, we don't do that much in our culture anymore in any, any particular way. And then you've got the kneeling idea. And I've seen a lot of preachers over the years sort of take that to heart and, and kneel down and pray with someone. And it, I know it means a lot to the person being prayed with. 
And, and it still demonstrates, I think, to, to most of us that, that humility necessary. It puts God on top and us below in a very clear way. And then you've got two knees down. And then you've got uh, slowly but surely over the years kind of stepping to this standing position. And again, I, I don't have a problem with this necessarily, but I do think there's sort of a change overall in the grand scheme of things to the point where we're standing and almost forgetting who the worship is about sometimes. It's, it becomes a little more about me and my stance and less about God and His position. Just some things to think about, hopefully to get you thinking. All right, so in this passage here, it's, it's a literal Satan worship that he is is trying to get Jesus to do. And I know today in our, in our day and age, there are people out there who will do some kind of sat satanic rituals. They will literally worship Satan, and, or at least ideas of Satan, and some of those are maybe fictional ideas of who Satan is. Uh, this is uh, the, the first place where I can see that idea, at least uh, uh, brought about. Who brings it out? Well, Satan himself, of course. He, he wants that worship. He wants that honor paid to him. And he has the audacity to ask Jesus, the Son of God, to do that. And, and so that astounds us first and foremost. Uh, and and that's, that's the idea. He says, fall down and worship me. And, and that is the typical position of worship, the pleading in the Bible that is done face to the ground. Worship Satan. Is Satan is, uh, you know, anyone can be worshipped, right? Uh, anything can be worshipped. How do we do that? How do we show worship to something? The word for worship means to fall down, to bow low, to fall.